let's do some limits. So here is a limit we're going to see kind of a lot of in the future. It's an indeterminate and zero over zero type, meaning if I plugged in x equal to three, I would get nine minus nine on top, which is zero, and nine plus three, which is 12 minus 12 on the bottom, which is also zero. And so when we're trying to evaluate a limit like this, what we often have to do is some algebra, which often involves either factoring or multiplying by a conjugate or using a common denominator. In this case, we're going to factor. Usually there's factoring involved in kind of all of them, even if we have to do some of the other steps first. So I'm gonna factor the top and the bottom. This is gonna be the limit as x goes to three. The top factor is x minus three times x plus three. The denominator factors as x minus three times x plus four. And then we can see that those x minus threes can cancel out. Now here's the thing, and this is an important thing about a limit. A limit as x approaches three, is asking what is this function doing as x gets closer and closer to three, but not actually equal to three. So when I ask what's the limit as x approaches three of this, it's actually the same as the limit as x approaches three of this remaining result, because canceling this out over here doesn't make a difference if you're looking at everything where x is not equal to three. So I get the limit as x goes to three is x plus three over x plus four. What I'm saying there, just to kind of clarify that even more, what I'm really saying is these two functions x squared minus nine over x squared plus x minus 12 and x plus three over x plus four. These are the same everywhere except at positive three. Right here when I plug in three, I get six over seven. Here when I plug in three, I get zero over zero. But here's the thing I'm trying to emphasize. When we're taking the limit as x approaches three, we don't actually care what's happening at three. So for all intents and purposes, this function and this function are the same everywhere they need to be, which means that the limit of this and the limit of this also get to be the same because these functions are the same everywhere close to three, just not at three. So then we just do what's called the evaluation theorem. We evaluate this limit by plugging in three for x and we get three plus three over three plus four which is six plus seven, six over seven. Notice that once I've actually plugged in the values, I no longer write the limit, but up until then I do. All right, so here's the next one. I want you to pause your video and try this one on your own. It's a limit as x approaches negative five of four x plus 20 over x cubed plus 125. And yes, it is a zero over zero type. So pause your video, give it a try. And then once you're done, start it up again. I'll show you the solution. So here's the solution. The bottom does factor kind of in a challenging way with the limit as x goes to negative five. The top, we can obviously factor out of four. We're left with x plus five. And the x plus five is the factor we want to cancel because it's going to zero. The denominator, x cubed plus 125 as well. x cubed plus five cubed is of the form a cubed plus b cubed. And the sum of cubes factors as a plus b, times a squared minus ab plus b squared. There's this thing called SOAP for uh, same, opposite, always positive, right? This sign is a plus b, this sign is the same sign plus, this sign is the opposite sign, this sign is always positive. It also works as a cubed minus b cubed, except the opposite changes. So x cubed plus five cubed is gonna factor as x plus five times x squared minus five x plus five squared. These can cancel. We're left with the limit as x approaches negative five of four over x squared minus five x plus 25. And then we can plug in the remaining, or plug in x equal to negative five. We get four over negative five squared minus five times negative five plus 25, which is equal to four over 25 plus 25 plus 25, which is 4 over 75.